NCAA tournament team or an NCAA tournament game after having four or more players foul out. Coach Sampson is joined by senior Jamal Shedd, 21 points, 10 assists in 44 plus minutes tonight. And redshirt sophomore guard Emmanuel Sharp, a career high 30. We'll start with the comments from Coach Sampson and then take questions for the student athletes. Coach? <coughs> That's a perfect record for uh, Houston to have four players foul out and still find a way to win. Um, you know, one of the things I kept hearing was how much better Texas A&M was uh, from the last time that we uh, played them and uh, how maybe we weren't. Um, and they were right. Texas A&M is a lot better um, than the first time we uh, – played them. Um, Taylor, Obasiki, uh, Radford, those guys are, are really good. That's, there's a reason why they were dominating the SEC at the uh, end of the year. But uh, regardless of who we put on the floor tonight, um, our, kids, our kids didn't play together, they played for each other. And there's a big difference in that. A lot of teams play together. But uh, teams, teams that play for each other. You know, it's the first time I've done this this year is that, you know, we lost four starters from last year's team. Um, Jarris Walker, Marcus Sasser, Shaman Mark, and then a special guy in Reggie Chaney. And I hadn't mentioned Reggie other than when we watched him on film, but I, I brought Reggie up at halftime. I said that, um, what would Reggie do, J1? What, what would Reggie do, Javier? Because I didn't think either one of those guys played very good the first half. So I asked him about Reggie. And um, as soon as I said it, um, out of the corner of my eye, I saw Jamal got really emotional. Uh, Ramon got really emotional. So um, that, one, that one was for uh, Big Reg. You know, <clears throat> um, they were at full strength and, uh, and played well. Texas A&M played great tonight. I mean, you can tell they're a lot better team than when we played them early. But um, as good as they play, we had the best play on the floor, Jamal Shedd. And um, some, some, sometimes at the end, that, that's all you need. Now, as far as <laughs> we're up uh, 12, was that our biggest lead at the end of the game before they tied it? 13? You know, somebody's going to say, well, what happened? Well, in case you didn't watch the game, let me, let me explain how this thing happens. You go one for two from the free throw line, uh, and they come down, shoot and miss, balls batted around. Next thing you know, it's, 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 it, somebody spits it out, and they make a three, okay? Um, with a couple unfortunate turnovers. We had a couple unfortunate calls. Um, go our way. But uh, you give all the credit to Texas A&M there. You know, you don't make any excuses. Their kids were fighting their hearts out. That's one of the things that makes Texas A&M so good. That's, that's, why, that's why they won five straight SEC games, is how hard they fight. Um, but you saw two teams do that tonight. Uh, we, we have a tremendous, tremendous culture that's, that's – uh, built on the kids that we uh, bring into our program. Um, you know, we're not much of a, you know, a lot of teams, and the portal's been good to us. LJ Cryer came from the portal. Uh, Damian came from the portal. But as the homegrown guys, like uh, Jamal came in as a 17-year-old freshman, J1 Roberts, 17-year-old freshman, um, Emmanuel, 18-year-old freshman, Javier Francis, 17-year-old freshman, Ramon Walker came in as a freshman. You know, most of our, most of our guys are, came in as freshmen and stayed. Um, and probably the statistic that I, still blows me away in this day and age is in our top 10 players uh, over the last 10 years, we've only had two kids transfer that was in our top 10. Now we had some kids that didn't get to play much and they transferred, but they weren't in our top 10. We've only had two in 10 years. That tells you a lot about the kind of culture that we've built and the kind of kids that we've recruited. And that allows us not to give in. When most people thought 
after that shot that the uh, Garcia kid shot, I don't know how many threes he's made this year, but he probably hasn't shot very many. But that's how you upset teams. That's how that thing goes. You make hard shots, and they did. They made a lot of hard, hard, hard threes. Um, but when that one went in, I'm sure most people's thought process was, Houston screwed up. They're going to lose now. That would have been the wrong assumption because our, our kids are, are built for that. We gave up a 15-point uh, lead, I think it was, at Baylor. We were up 15. Baylor came back and tied it. <clears throat> Place was going nuts, and we won in overtime. So we had something to draw from. We, it's my college coach's son. Um, uh, we, we had something to draw from, and uh, our kids are tough, man. You know, we're, we got tough kids, and in that moment, we needed, we needed belief, and we needed uh, toughness. Um, like you said, we, everybody was fouling out. We were, said lot number two, is that his number? Uh, didn't start playing basketball to his 15. We took him to help us in his third year. Well, this is his first. <laughs> he shouldn't even be playing. You know, we, we've uh, just found a way. All these years I've been doing this stuff, um, I don't know if there's a more satisfying win than tonight. Just can't tell you how proud I am of this, of this group. Just really, really proud of this team. We'll open it up for questions for the student athletes, your name and affiliation, and the player you'd like to direct your question toward in the back left. Justin Williams from The Athletic for Jamal and Eman. Just your thoughts at the end of the game there when Ryan's on the line shooting free throws and you guys are on the bench fouled out. I was shocked he missed one. Um, he, he, he works just like we work. And if I'm being honest, he works harder than we work. Um, anytime you can, you can ask anybody on our team and they can vouch for him. Um, anytime we walk in the gym, Ryan Elvin is in the gym working, helping somebody else work. Um, Terrence was having a really good year beginning of this year because he was working out with Ryan Elvin. Um, that's, that's a guy that, you know, we trust and is a pillar of our culture. And honestly, I'm shocked that he missed one. So, um, kudos to Ra and, um, way to step up. Thanks. Uh, Pretty much the same thing. You know, Rod, Rod puts the work in. And, you know, he's prepared for moments like this. Uh, our guard coach, Coach Q, he's always talking out. I'm not afraid to put Ryo in because I know he's ready. And that's a prime example of it. Uh, I mean, everybody everybody knew he was going to make those free throws. Uh, guys, we're going to your right. Uh, Jonah Dillon, commercial appeal for Jamal. Just We obviously <coughs> heard Coach talk about it, that halftime speech, and, and just Reggie's influence and impact on you. Just talk about how that affected you and how the halftime speech kind of changed things. Um, he mentioned Reggie, and um, I kind of I kind of didn't really listen to the rest of the speech. Uh, kind of just started to tear up a little bit. Um, but, you know, going into today, round of 32, we have 32 on our jersey for a reason. Um, that dude was a warrior, um, played with broken knuckles, <laughs> stress fractures in his knee back spasms, and I think he may have, may have missed one game. Um, so when he asked, what would Reggie do? Reggie would fight, and I think we did that the second half. Mm -hmm. Right here on the uh, aisle left side. Uh, yeah, this is Olin Buchanan from Tex Ags. Jamal, uh, especially there in the first half, y'all kept uh, Wade Taylor to just one point. He had like 34, I think, the first game. Y'all, How did y'all do that? How, how were y'all able to keep him uh, contained? I don't think we contained Wade. Uh, I'd say they didn't go to him. Um, Obasiki and Radford kind of carried the load the first half because they were actually getting to the rim. And I feel like once we kind of stopped them a little bit, then Wade, you know, kind of took over and tried to do his thing. Um, I mean, you, when you play against good players like Wade, uh, all you can do is try to make a miss. Um, and hats <clears> off to him and the work that he's put in. And it's been an awesome journey for him because I've seen him grow from high school and it's it's amazing to see him at this level and what he's been able to do so um I don't think we contained him I think they just kind of went to him a little too late same side in the back Emmanuel kind of a two-part question I think you were hurt your senior year of high school or right? just maybe a little bit about that injury and kind of the, what you've gotten to this point and then obviously the, the game you had tonight you must have been feeling it shooting from deep uh, <clears throat> I mean yeah um at the end of my junior year uh Broke my leg at an open run. Uh, 
I just I was in a cast for six weeks and kind of just decided to take my senior year off and, and come to college early. And that was the best decision I could have made. You know, uh, I got to come here early, experience the culture, and, and see the game from a, a different view. Um, you know, I just got in with Bishop and the rest of the staff, and, and they helped me come back from a crazy injury like that. Uh, I rehabbed a lot, and, you know, it's, it's got me all the way to where I am right now. And, you know, I just, my teammates trusted me tonight, especially Jamal, always looking for me. And, you know, shot was going in today. All right, we're going to check, uh, go to Zoom for a question for student athletes. Dan, go ahead. Dan Tortora, wake up call, DT.com. For both of the student athletes, uh, when you hear your coach speak about you the way that he does and about the fight in this team, just what it's like to play for Kelvin Sampson and just what it means to you to have him as your leader, especially down the stretch in a game like this. Um, he, he only gives credit when it's earned. Um, he makes you work for it. And, you know, he, he always tells us, trust your work. So um, I think that's the biggest thing I've learned here. Um, is that if you put the work in, he'll give you the, the opportunity to, to show that you've put that work in. And um, he has the ultimate trust in us, and we have the ultimate trust in him. Um, he's the best motivator I've ever been, in my, been around in my life, best coach I know in America. And, you know, when a guy like that trusts you, your confidence level is through the roof. Well, the last one for the student athletes in front of me here. Jamal, it feels like a while ago, but that put back dunk in the second half. Can you just take us through what you saw and what happened there? I'm not even supposed to go for offensive rebounds, uh, so uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad that it went in and it kind of bounced my way, or uh, if they would have scored in transition, I would have got a, a butt chewing. So um, it just happened to bounce my way, and coach says it all the time, good things happen when you're playing hard. So um, it was just uh, a good bounce, and I went and got it. Jim, we'll let you uh, get back to the locker room. Congratulations on Sweet 16. Thank you. We'll open the floor for questions for Coach Sampson, beginning uh, uh, left of the aisle on the back. Coach, same thing I asked those two guys to start. What's kind of going through your mind at the end of the game when Ryan's on the free throw line? You know, um, there's probably not a day in the month where I'm not up at the office. Um, I'm a perpetual tinkerer. I like to tinker, um, whether it's watching stuff on the iPad. But when I go in on Sunday mornings, uh, it's my favorite time because nobody's there except one person, Ryan Elvin. Um, he's always Sunday morning, he's on that gun. I don't, I've never been in there on a Sunday morning and Ryan Elvin's not on that gun. He is a, um, um, he's, he's such a great role model for our guys. Um, you know, he's, he's one of those guys that has it. Like he's the best bowler on the team. He's the best pool player on the team. He's the best softball player on the team. He's the best shooter on the team. Um, you know, he was a preferred walk-on. I didn't know what that was until about two years ago. We recruited him, we asked him to walk on. I found out later that was a preferred walk-on. Um, but <clears throat> the Second summer he was here, the guy that was his biggest fan was his dad, and his dad passed away. And that was, a, that was a big loss to our program. Ryan's also a great cook. He goes, he goes to the grocery store and buys groceries and cooks in his, in his uh, apartment and invites the team over. He's just one of those guys, you know. Um, uh, somebody needs a ride, Ryan's always taking care of him. Uh, he's, he's the guy on the team that when they need advice, they go to Ryan. Um, you know, guys come and go. You know, we've, we've had uh, some sustained success here. You know, it seems like every year we lose three or four starters, right? But Ryan's been here for four years. Jamal's four years. j ones five years. We, we've got our guys. But Ryan is kind of a behind-the-scenes link. I'm so glad you guys are asking a question about him because I could bring him up and he wouldn't mean anything. But when he stepped up there and um, missed the first one, I said, okay, he got that one out of the way because he never misses. Um, then the second one, he just uh, drained. And I almost left him in because he's really good at the top of a 2-3 zone. 
<clears throat> but uh, as much as I love Ryan, he's he's got my athleticism, uh, which is not very not very much. So I put the uh, kid that I thought could help us in his fifth semester in in his second semester. <laughs> but you know, we were just cobbling it together. You know, we had. Everybody was in foul trouble. They went to the free throw line 45 times, and they played good. I mean, they killed us on the boards. Um, but you know, we, um, you know, it's it's been like this in the Big 12 all year. Close games. We've been in a lot of close games, and um, you know, we're very fortunate tonight to win. Uh, Texas A&M could have won that game, so. But only one team can advance, and I've learned not to autopsy wins this time of the year. So we move on. Probably just time for maybe a couple of more. If there uh, is another, while we wait for that, we'll get one uh, from Zoom. Go ahead, Dan. Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldet.com. Coach, you kept speaking on teams that can play together, but playing for each other, mm -hmm. and just what that looks like even deeper to go into that and just how this team banded together for one another in an unselfish, very focused demeanor tonight. Yeah, well, we're, we're you know, a basketball team is very uh, nomadic. You know, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with all the people around us this time of year because we take pride in being by ourselves. Um, you know, uh, starting the first Monday in June, our kids are uh, on the baseball on Mondays. We're on the baseball field at 6:15 a.m. And with our culture, that means they're there probably about 10 to 6. There's nobody there then. It's just by ourselves, and we're working. We have to run uh, 18 100-yard sprints in time. Then on Tuesday, we go up to a park a parking garage that's got a uh, um, a ramp that we run straight up with. Um, pipes uh, behind our back with uh, weighted vest on for time. Wednesday's a shooting day. Thursday is um, um, gym day where it's ridiculous amount of running. Then I time them in the mile every Friday. When you go through stuff like that at 545, 6 o'clock in the morning, you learn, to, you, you, you learn to respect the guy beside you. Uh, you know he's going through everything you're going through and I hold them all accountable. I don't treat anybody any different. Doesn't matter whether it's Jairus Walker, Marcus Sasser, Corey Davis, Armani Brooks, Dejan Giroux, Jamal Shedd, Javier Francis, J1 Roberts. If you come into our program, you're part of a special group, but there's, a, um, there's an accountability, an expectation to meet our standard. And we have high standards, um, you know, um, it's kind of funny watching us being ranked number one in the nation. I, I don't know that we ever think that way. I know our fans do, but our fans don't really know us. They just pull for us if we win. Uh, I remember the early days at uh, Huff Hines when nobody uh, was around then. Um, and that's, that's where we learn how to work. And, and I'm so blessed to have coached that first team that went 13 and 19. That, that was the only team that my wife's ever asked, could you get them to sign a basketball for me? So that 13 and 19, my wife has that ball. We have a uh, lake house in North Carolina, and I see it every summer. She has that ball displayed in a prominent position there. And uh, that's the only one. We've been to Final Fours, Elite A's, won a ton of ch conference championships, but she's only got one ball. And that's from that 13 and 19 team. She appreciated that team because they never quit. Coach, we'll uh, let you go on that one. Congratulations. Okay. Good luck Thank in Dallas. Thank you, guys.